Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The U.S. Navy and Marine Corps spend a lot of time on aircraft carriers and amphibious assault ships, respectively, according to mission specifics. The flight deck crew can keep a small number of fighter jets on the deck of these warships. But there's not nearly enough space for the tens of aircraft stationed on a typical carrier or the massive cargo and equipment that are needed for the mission. The U.S. Navy has, over the years, developed an assault support system that synchronizes the simultaneous horizontal and vertical movement of troops, cargo, and vehicles through the ship. And the vertical movements are largely done with elevator technology. One of the earliest forms of this technology was found on the Lexington-class aircraft carriers in 1927. The hydraulic system for an elevator is quite an interesting technology. There is a hydraulic engine that converts hydraulic pressure into the force necessary to lift the elevator. These high-speed aluminum hydraulic elevators are big and powerful enough to lift two fighter jets, as well as other massive equipment. A few hydraulic lifts provide interconnection between several parts of the aircraft carrier, such as the magazines and the hangar, the weapons preparation area, and the flight deck. For instance, when not in use, some aircraft are secured in the carrier's garage, known as the hangar bay. When maintenance is performed, it is necessary that the aircraft and other necessary equipment be transported between the hangar and the flight deck. The hangar bay is a storage structure for the aircraft carrier located two decks below the flight deck. and it is about 34 meters wide, 8 meters high, and about 209 meters long, more than two-thirds the length of the entire ship. Not only is the hangar bay sufficient for multiple aircraft maintenance works, but it is also used to store spare jet engines, fuel tanks, and other heavy equipment. Depending on the design of the aircraft carriers, there are about four giant elevators surrounding the hangar. There are special techniques for moving the aircraft easily in this space. One method chiefly used is the pushback truck. which has a low configuration that aids in steering ability. And they have a chassis configuration that keeps their center of gravity close to the ground. The pushback truck uses a towing hook attached to the nose landing gear of the aircraft, or a tow bar from the truck can be attached to the aircraft.
The hangar bay has several specialties, such as the weapons elevator, as well as other smaller lift systems. The weapon elevator moves missiles and bombs from its magazine to the bay and the flight deck. Where they are collected to be loaded on the aircraft before launch. These elevators are usually located behind the launch area in order to ensure planes can be loaded with ammunition as quickly as possible. Aircraft carriers on international waters on a mission are always ready to deploy munitions at a moment's notice at any time of the day. And the bomb assembly room is vital to the success of such a rapid response. The magazine is equipped with all the tools and ingredients needed to make a standard size bomb by sailors that have special types of training in bomb manufacturing and assembly. And these specially trained sailors are referred to as the ordnance handlers. The hangar bay also serves as a garage where scheduled inspections and maintenance are carried out. More than this, there are several activities that are done in this area, including serving as a field for special types of sports for the sailors. They can carry out firefighting drills as well as damage control drills. These drills use a simulation of different casualty situations and the sailors are taught the best practices. From how to handle an emergency and how to incorporate help from civilian emergency responders to how to integrate help from a nearby ship. The drill is designed to improve the aircraft carrier's ability to fight fires and manage the damage. A crucial part of the logistics in the hangar bay is cargo management. The United States Navy uses a forklift to transfer cargo and ordnance in the hangar bay of an aircraft carrier. Deck edge elevators are not limited to the movement of aircraft and ammunition on different levels of the ship. What you see here is a training exercise that can be conducted on a landing helicopter dock, or LHD, as part of the U.S. Marine Corps hoist training. Commonly known as fast rope exercise, this technique for descending a thick rope is done to simulate a situation where troops can be deployed from places where the aircraft cannot touch down. It is one of the most common infiltration methods used by special operations forces and some conventional units. as it is a convenient and effective way to insert troops.
The U.S. Marines also conduct a variety of tactical training to protect themselves from aerial attacks. As the ability to defend against aerial attacks is critical for maritime forces. During the training, there are various flying targets flown at varying altitudes to be used as replicas of enemy aircraft. While flying to the target, there's a two-man team consisting of a team leader and a gunner. The team leader would be positioned directly behind the shooter, placing a hand on his shoulder and motioning towards the target. the gunner would adjust his position accordingly and use his stinger weapon system to bring down the target. The stinger weapon system is a portable, shoulder-fired supersonic system that weighs about 35.5 pounds. It is designed to counter high-speed, low-level ground attack aircraft, and it is very effective against helicopters and unmanned aerial vehicles that can be a threat to the U.S. Marines. The U.S. Marines are also trained to shoot accurately and handle weapons safely in combat by subjecting them to the rigors of marksmanship training. The Marines have a performance-based training model. All right. You guys ready to do that? Which is a style of marksmanship training designed to increase combat lethality throughout the Marine Corps. The basic training marksmanship course consists of three distinct phases. Including weapons introduction, where the Marines spend a considerable amount of time getting to know the rifles and getting accustomed to the rules of Marine Corps rifle safety. You guys get happy. Then there is a snap-in week, which is a classroom setting for learning the four standard firing positions, which are standing, kneeling, sitting, and prone. The last phase is the firing week, where students get to fire weapons and practice on the firing range. They shoot at targets that are 200, 300, and 500 yards away from the firing positions. Target. Target. By simulating an operational environment, the Marines uses this training to deliver lethal hits on stationary and moving targets in the same way that they would in combat. Life aboard aircraft carriers is one of the busiest and most interesting, and perhaps one of the most dangerous. Making the technologies on board, such as the elevator system and the rigorous training activities, important in ensuring the smooth operation of these warship vessels. That's the end of this video. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and we'll see you in our next video.